God saying that the old church has gone the old way of just, just you know, uh, believe us now, we are either on fire or we're just not going to make it. But this is by no means a doom and gloom message. I am so not full of doom and gloom. I don't know about you, is there anyone here today you're thinking, this is the time that I was born for? Yeah. I was born for such a time as this. Yes, it's going to be challenges. Yes, it could be a bit scary. But I was born for such a time as this. The old time where church is a mixture and it's just, it's entertainment. And it's kind of like, it's just, where's the Holy Spirit? I wasn't born for such a time as that, was, were you? <laughs> were you a misfit back then? Any, was anybody a misfit in the dead church? Okay, because the dead church is over, okay? L listen, I'm not just, I haven't got an axe to grind and I'm not just being funny, but when, hey, do you know what? Weatherspoons is open, you know what I mean? Weatherspoons is open today. Uh, and, and, and for them, it's, it's a risk, you know? But they're opening. Uh, but how many churches and leads are open today? There's not many, is there? Praise God for the ones there are. And there's some others in this complex that are open. And we're not here standing here for the, oh, look at us, look at us. We just fear God. Yeah. If we yeah. actually believe that Jesus Christ is the risen Lord and his yeah. word says to gather together and worship him, you, you, you know, coming together and, and be together in fellowship, that's important, isn't it? If weather spoons can open, why can't churches open? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would, don't be, if you're watching this, please don't give your tithes, don't give your offerings. Just let, let, it's a dead religious system and let it die. It's just rolling over and showing its big yellow cowardly belly, okay? That sounds rough. I know, well, the season of political correctness is over. The like season that. of man-pleasing is yeah, over. Yeah, like I'm that. not, I, I'm here to love people, but I love God. Mm. And we're in the end times and we haven't got time to mess about. And, yeah. you know, look, what, that, that prophetic, could you say that that was true? You know, we sat there in October last year and we heard that this next decade, this is what's yeah. going to happen. He's been preaching it for five years and other mature apostolic voices have as well. Okay. And so when we, we came back and we had that impartation, New Year's Eve, and I said this, New Year's Eve brought that same kind of message here and it, it didn't go down that well, not with our people, but, but it's the truth. We're, we're living in a time of crisis. Okay. Yeah. And it's exciting. And it's vital that you're connected to a ministry that prepares you for the times that you're that we are living in now so that we have the right foundation we need the right foundation of faith we need to know how to get the anointing flowing in our life we need to know how to connect with the presence of god we need to know how to operate in the supernatural mm -hmm. you know I, i'm just saying look uh, uh, I, I don't believe for anybody here to get COVID. okay Amen. I don't believe for anybody to get sick. I don't believe for anybody to get broken. If anybody loses their job, well, God's plan's not for you to have a job. God's plan's for you to have a calling and he'll meet your needs, okay? He, God's plan's to give you a vocation. I declare in Jesus' name, all millionaires are born in a time of recession, okay? Well, one or two people believe that. I say more millionaires are born in a time of recession than any other time. And I'm looking at some people who are Abraham's seed here. And Abraham lived in a time of famine. He lived in a time of famine and he was blessed. So thank you, Jesus. This is our time. This is the time that we have been born for. You know, and uh, crisis. In a time of crisis, people are looking to feel secure. People are looking to feel protected. But I believe we are in a... This current crisis may have a sense of that it's kind of wearing off. And this isn't doom and gloom. But in this decade, there's more to come. Yeah. You know, and it's not just like we rejoice, oh, there's more to come. Oh, this is going to be great. Us Christians, we're just waiting for the rapture of us out there. Let the world go to... No, it's not like that, but it's the truth. The, the end time outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to come in a time of darkness. Deep yeah. darkness is going to be upon the people when the glory comes. And so a positive motivational message of the world is just a great place and it's all getting better is just not a true message. So, but there's, there's going to be crisis that is above and beyond the control of people. Now let's get into the word of God, okay? So God has a plan for us, not just to survive crisis, but to thrive. Job chapter 5 verses 6 and 7. Job 5 verses 6 and 7 says this. It says, for affliction does not come from the dust, nor does trouble spring forth from the ground. Yet man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. So look, 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 no matter who we are, 
And no matter whether we're rich, poor, whatever background, where we're from, at some point in our life, there's going to be crisis. Yeah. Okay? And if we look at what the Word of God is saying here, affliction, trouble, and crisis does not just happen. It is not without intelligent design. It's not something that just unconsciously grows out of the dust of the earth. Okay, that's what the word's saying here. A trouble, affliction, and crisis is not just something that grows out of the ground unconsciously. It doesn't just happen. Affliction, trouble, and crisis is inherent within the human race, and it's spiritual in origin because the, the everything that's happened is governed by the spirit realm, by the invisible realm. And things are out of kilter. Things are out of order in the invisible realm. And God is in the process of bringing things into order. Yeah. As we are approaching and get closer to the end times. Listen, I, and I love to repeat this. The last book of the Bible. The last book of the Bible is called the book of Revelation. It's actually called the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ is not called the revelation of the devil. It's called the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And what's happening is God is wrapping things up in this present dispensation and he's revealing his son who's coming, first of all, to get his church out, but then after the tribulation to bring the judgment, to bring wrap everything up. And the enemy and everything that is in rebellion to God is freaking out, okay? Let, let's just declare Jesus is Lord. He is the one who's in charge. He's the one who's stuck on his throne. And so everything in the invisible realm is out of sync. But God's in the process of bringing all of the rebellion out of his creation and bringing everything into order. That's what he's doing. And that's what he's going to be doing. And so we are in a time of crisis and it is spiritual in origin. And we can think, but I'm born again. I'm a new creation. Amen. And we're born again. You're born again? Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says you're born from above. I'm no longer, I'm no more of this world than he is of this world. So why does the crisis, in a sense, why do we feel it? Because Jesus told the story, didn't he? He told the story about the wise man and the foolish man. If you build your house on the rock, you build your house on the sand. Guess what? The crisis hits both houses. Okay, if you're born again, and if we're born again, we shouldn't be foolish. We should listen and act on, obey the word of God. Okay, we shouldn't have itching ears. We should act on and in obedience obey the word of God. But the Bible, Jesus is very clear. The crisis hits both houses. Yep. Everybody gets touched by the crisis. But the issue is... The foundation is our foundation on the sand or is our foundation on the rock Amen. okay so we're a new creation in christ but jesus himself said as well he said in me you'll have peace but in this world you will have trouble and that word world is the word cosmos and it's where we get the the, the word today will be like system it's a world system he said, look, in me you have peace, but in this world system, you are going to have trouble. And that word trouble can be crisis, it can be containment, it can be all kinds of things that, that come at us. And when it's hitting the whole world at once, we're feeling it. Okay? We're, we're feeling it. But if we're built on the rock, we have the promise that we ain't going to collapse. We ain't going to fall apart like a deck of cards. Okay? He says, you're going to have trouble, but take heart, because I have overcome this world. Yep. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And this is our victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. The Bible says, so everybody who's born of God overcomes the world. Is there anybody here, you're confident today, you can absolutely say, I am born of God. Amen. I'm born of God. I am born of God. You're not, you're not arrogant, but when you, when you hear something, am I born of God? Yes, I am. Even on my worst day, even when I feel not so good, I'm 
born of God. Well, you have a cast iron guarantee in the blood of Jesus that you are going to overcome. Not if, not maybe, you are going to overcome. Amen. You're going to overcome. But why do we have to go through crisis as well? Well, God has brought us out of Egypt. But in sacrificing us, he is bringing Egypt out of us. Okay? Egypt's old ways of thinking. Okay? So everybody overcome. Everybody born of God is going to overcome. That's it. That's, God, what, that's what God says. He says you're going to overcome. So does that mean you're just going to cope? Does that mean you're just going to get by? No, you're going to overcome. If you overcome something, that means you go over. That means you don't go under. Okay, so if you get wakened up at 3 o'clock in the morning with thoughts of anxiety and fear and worry, their thoughts coming at you saying, you are going under. No, you are going over. Come on, I'll, I'll repeat that again. You, if you get thoughts coming at you saying, you're going under, you are going over. Say over. You are going over. Because you are an overcomer. You're an overcomer. But I tell you what, in crisis, who can say here, God met you in a crisis? Is there anybody here, God yeah. met you, God has met you in crisis, okay? Who here, you got born again in your crisis? Yeah. I got born again in a crisis, okay? I would say most people probably get saved and born again in a crisis. Why do many people with drug addictions get, why is it many guys who are uh, 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 being addicted to drugs get saved? Because their life is just one crisis. They haven't got any veneer of self-righteous, I'm a good person, okay? They're in total crisis. And when they hear the gospel, it's good news to them. <laughs> so God meets us in crisis. Most of us get born again in a crisis. And God meets us in crisis. Has God been faithful to you and met you in crisis? Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what, that deserves giving God some praise right there. Thank you, God, that you have always met me in crisis and you will always meet me in crisis has he ever failed to meet you in your crisis no hallelujah and yet when you're in your crisis and it's like you're facing that cliff edge it does feel like you are going to go under and he's just in time hallelujah he never fails to meet you in your crisis god met abraham in crisis he met jacob in crisis he met Joseph in his crisis. He met David in his crisis. All those people experienced crisis. That meant at one point, they felt this is game over. I'm going under. They felt the emotions as it's over. I'm going under. We read it like we're watching a movie. In retrospect, we think, oh, come on, David. Yes, there you are in that cave hiding from your enemies. Don't worry, I've read the story. Everything's okay. Of course, you didn't have emotions and fears and things like that. You had a great calling on your life. You had all this prophetic uh, ministry you'd received about becoming the king of Israel. Why are you afraid? Of course, he was a human being. He was, he was afraid. One of the things he was probably afraid of is I've had this sense of calling on my life and I'm going to die and it's not going to be fulfilled. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be who I'm meant to be. I'm supposed to be the king and I'm going to die in this cave and be a nobody. <laughs> Hallelujah. God met David in his crisis. Yeah. He met Peter in his crisis. Peter denied Jesus. That's a pretty bad crisis. Hallelujah. And he's an expert in meeting people in his crisis. He met Peter and restored him in his crisis. He met Paul. Paul was in a crisis. Blinded by the light on the Damascus road. I mean, Paul, he's concerned. He's going to spend the rest of his life. For those three days, and I been Paul, I'd be convinced I'm going to be blind for the rest of my life. That's it. I've been spending my life killing followers of this Jesus. Now I'm in trouble with this Jesus. This Jesus is God. Oops, big mistake. Now I'm blind. Not good. This Jesus who I've been persecuted, whoa, he, he, is absolute, he is actually the Messiah and the fulfillment of Old Testament scripture and I'm his enemy. Not a good place to be. God met Paul in his crisis. God meets you in your crisis. And it's in your crisis that you find that he is the all-powerful, supernatural God. And he's been working with people like you for a long time. So he's not surprised by you. Okay, you're weird, you're complex. Some of us cause our own troubles. 
at times. But he's, been, he's, he's an expert. Okay. Let's go to the word of God. Hosea 5.15. Hosea 5.15 says, I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. Hosea 5.15. Now what tends to happen, even in our Christian life, and oh, I love God, I'm a good Christian, I love God, is, and I've seen this pattern in myself, I fall away from, first, we, can, we can fall away from first love, from living in the presence of God. I'm doing okay now. A few years ago, when I was an addict, first saved, and when I was struggling, I, I, I literally had to live off the presence of God like oxygen. But now I'm doing okay. I'm more stable, I'm more mature. I don't like pray as much as I used to. Now I'm not putting a law on people about prayer. But you know, when people first get saved in a crisis, Jesus, it's Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Yeah. Then they get filled up a bit and that's fantastic. And then say, like, well, I don't really need the church. I don't really need the presence. I'm doing fine. And then a, then a crisis can hit. And really what happens is we realize we've lived independently from God, which is a form of pride. That's where trouble comes. So what do we do? We humble ourselves. People tend to humble. That, that's the time when people humble themselves. We acknowledge our errors. And that's when we find the presence of God in affliction. Look, it's in crisis that people see God. Do you remember when you've been in crisis and you saw God? Like you needed him more than oxygen? I needed him more than food? And yet what's happening? What's coming on the world? is there's a level of crisis that there are no natural answers to. Okay? One of the reasons I feel that there's got to be more shakings to come. The shakings, okay, I want to be clear. This shaking that we're experiencing on the world. Okay, now, number one, does God make people sick with COVID? No, disease does not come from God, but no. God has allowed the crisis. And the reason I'm saying that is because God, not the devil, is sovereign. Yeah. Okay? If something's going to shake 150 nations, and shut down the global economy, and shut down every airline, shut down Hollywood, shut down just about everything. I'm sorry, that's a sovereign act. The devil is not sovereign. Amen. Okay? Yeah. And some people can be like, well, well, all our sin was dealt with at the cross. God won't do things like that anymore. Well, Yes, all our sin was dealt with at the cross, but the book of Revelation is still in the future after the cross, and we see the judgments happening there. Amen. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So I just that silly hyper grace argument just kills it. And, and, and you can see Jesus speaking to the seven churches. He, he's actually warning some of them look, if you don't stop, if you don't repent, I'll take away your lampstand. And I believe, and I've said, I believe the Church of Jesus Christ in the United Kingdom, just for the United Kingdom, the Church is under trial at the moment. Yeah. Okay? By that I mean there's a time of testing. We've never faced any kind of uncertainty. The Church, Chris, the church in the UK, okay, it's been slighted, I don't know. The group deadly type Christians are silly. <laughs> but the Church has never faced any kind of prospect of state persecution. The Church of Jesus Christ in the UK has never faced any kind of really uncertain future. And the church is facing it now. Yeah. And the church really is not, like I said, weather spoons is open. They're open. Bars and restaurants. How many bars and restaurants and pubs have you seen open? Lots and lots. Yeah. Where's the church? Now look, I know there's those places really can't open it. You have to rent a building and the place that you rent won't let you open or whatever. I know. But it's, we're living in a time like those 10 spies. The 10 spies looked at the challenges in the land and says, we're just a bunch of grasshoppers. We're nobodies. Okay? The two spies went, yes, there's giants. Yes, it's, there's danger. Yes, it's a bit scary. But we got God. We got God. We got promises from God to take that territory. Yes, there's going to be warfare. Of course, there's going to be warfare. There's going to be resistance. Listen, we got God. Oh, are we going to be like the ten spies and lay down and just show our belly? Are we going to be like Joshua and Caleb? Even the struggle in the future, we are never going to quit on God. We are never going to quit on God. We're not going to say no. We're not going to open till 2021. No, we are going to open. Amen. 
we're going to be the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so there's a there's a there's a time of crisis that's shaken, and in a time of crisis, that's when your Noahs will come forth. That's when a Moses, a Deborah, and a Deborah's in the house. That's when Deborah's come forth. That's when your Davids, your Marys, let it be to me according to your word, Lord. That's when people come forth who say, you know what? I'm going to overcome in this time of crisis and I'm going to listen to God. This is what it's all about. It's whether we listen to God or listen to the spirit of the world and the spirit of fear. And that spirit out there that's trying to divide people, divide us by the tent that we live in. You know, you know what I mean? Look, this thing is a tent. Right? We, all, our tents come in different shapes and sizes. Some a little larger than others. Whatever. Our tents are different colors. You know, we're going to put off this tent one day, aren't we? Jesus said in the end time, nation will rise against nation. The word nation in Greek is ethnos. There's going to be ethnic conflict. You know, the only answer to that is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, people from all nations together came together. The Pentecostal outpouring in the early 20th century was led by an African-American man. In a time of great prejudice. If it wasn't for that man, we would not be here today. It's in a Pentecostal outpouring. You don't get racism in a Pentecostal outpouring. <laughs> Amen. You get oneness with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. We need a revival more than ever. And we're in a time of crisis. We're in a time of crisis in the church and crisis in the land. And this shaking has been sent by God. Not by the devil. And that in a sense, well, look, if a crisis hits our life from the devil, we have authority to resist it. Yeah. If a crisis is allowed by God, that means there's no human solution to the answer of that crisis. Yeah. Hello, it's not a good idea to try and fight God. It's not a good idea to try and tackle God. We're going to lose. If all the governments in the world together try and oppose God, guess who's going to win? God. Yeah. That means there is no human solution to this crisis. And crisis begets more crisis. Yeah. I think this is interesting. The word crisis in Japanese means two things. It means danger and it means opportunity. It means danger and opportunity. That means there is risk. But there is great opportunity. It means there's no going back. But we have the God who makes a way where there is no way. I look in, in the New Testament, the word in the word crisis in Greek, crisis, means the following. It means separation. The word crisis in New Testament Greek means separation. It means disruption. It means a shaking. It means a judgment. It means a revealing. A revealing. Now God is not the author of chaos. But he has to bring a shaking of things that are out of order. So that out of that shaking comes the revival and brings the divine order. Yeah. Ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So part of this shaking, the word crisis, God, God's judgments are crisis. They are a disruption of that which is not right. A separation, but a revealing. A revealing, which is a revealing of the true condition of a person or thing. A, the, a revealing of the true condition of a purpose or thing. So in this time of crisis allowed by God, which is, um, thank God, has brought many people to humility. It's helping to work repentance in many people. But you know, the governments of the world are bringing the most extreme abortion legislation ever. Yeah. In a, and they've used the time of this crisis to push it through. Yeah. Knowing that people's attention is elsewhere. That tells me they're going to have to have some more shaking. Okay? The, the, the church at large hasn't said much about that. The church at large has not really said a lot. But, so that tells me there's maybe more 
shaking to come. Yeah. Okay? Which just reveals. If I was to say, look, guys, who here, you're hungry for God, you say, I'm born for such a time as this. This is a new era. The old era is gone. It's gone. But if we're saying, look, I want to live a fully supernatural life. I want to live fully dependent on God. I want to be the type of person who has no fear for my future whatsoever. Who knows God is my provider. Who knows I have access to the anointing. I have access to faith. I have access to divine provision and supernatural finances. If I was to say, sure, let's say a show of hands, who wants that? Yeah. Oh, back there. <laughs> and you know what? All of us, to get there, you have to go through a time of crisis. As a believer, you have to go through a time of crisis to get you off the sand, to get you on the rock. I heard somebody say, look, when you look at a kingdom millionaire, and I said a kingdom millionaire, and everybody hears this, and you're offended by the message of prosperity. Number one, prosperity is biblical. Ungodly prosperity, ungodly prosperity is not biblical. Yeah. Covetousness, greed yeah. is not biblical. Okay, should other religions control the wealth? No. 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 Who put the wealth in the earth? Did the devil put it there? No. God put it there. Yeah. Who should control it? God's people. Yeah. Amen. God's people are too busy in socialism. God's people are too busy in uh, that realm to understand the message of the kingdom. Okay, so if we want to live supernatural, we have to go through crisis to get us from the natural to the supernatural. Listen, I mentioned something like finances there. If, 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 if God's called you, look, you know, we need this message because when people come into church who've got addictions, who've never known anything but living on benefits all their life, and their parents, and their parents, and their parents. And that's all they've known, is living on benefits. Is it a sin to live on benefits? No, I'm not saying it's a sin. But if that's all people have known, and all we can offer as a church is just more of the same, guess what? They're going to stay on that. They're going to stay on that forever, and they're never going to get set free. But if the anointing of God comes upon their life, and they are set free, and they are delivered from those mindsets, guess what? They're going to start prospering. Is that going to give glory to God? Yeah. Is that going to give glory to God? Do we want to do we want to just keep people who struggle with addictions in that trap, or do we want to see them having their own businesses? Yeah. Do we want to see that? I see that? Of course I do. Thank you, Jesus. But when we transfer from the natural to the supernatural, we have to go through crisis. Okay. The entrance to the supernatural life is often, more often than not, in crisis. The baptism in the Holy Spirit. Look at scripture. John the Baptist in Luke 3, Luke 3, 16 said, I baptize you with water, but what mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to unloose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. I want the baptism with the Holy Spirit and fire. I want to be saturated with the Holy Spirit and fire. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, there's somebody here. But then he goes on to say, his winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather the wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And the language he's using there is of a threshing floor. The person at the threshing floor would throw the, the crop up into the air, and the wheat would settle, and the chaff would be blown away. And, and what he's saying is the baptism in the spirit and fire brings something of a disruption into your life. That's what the word of God's saying. The entrance into the supernatural life, which is being baptized in the Holy Spirit and living in the spirit, is one where there's going to be a measure of crisis. Jesus himself, his entrance, Jesus' entrance into the supernatural life came through crisis when you can again in Luke 3 Luke 3 21 it says when all the people were being baptized Jesus was baptized too and as he was praying heaven opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove and a voice from heaven came saying you are my son 
my beloved, then you, I am well pleased. So, who wants an open heaven? Yeah. I want an open heaven over my life. I, don't, I, I just believe God is saying, I am opening the heavens over my remnant in the United Kingdom. Amen. I am opening the heavens over those who will take a stand for me. Now, Jesus, the Father entrusted Jesus as a mature son, as a mature son, and said, I'm pouring out my spirit on you. I am giving you the status. You are my son, and I love you, and you have an open heaven. And he went straight into a crisis in the wilderness. He was led by who into the wilderness? By the Spirit. Who instigated the crisis? The Spirit. God instigated this crisis. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, Luke 4, 1, verse 1, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He fasted 40 days. But guess what? Verse 14. He came out of the crisis. And God is saying, I have a remnant of people who are coming forth from this time of crisis. Listen to this. Verse 14. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. By the Spirit of God, I'm saying, there is a people in the United Kingdom. There's a people in this city who are coming forth through this time of crisis. And news about you is going to spread all around this nation. Spread all around the city. To the glory of God, the great things that God is doing amongst you. Because you stood in a time of crisis. Amen. Hallelujah, you passed through the time of crisis. And in this time of crisis and in the wilderness, you, he came forth revealed as the Son of God. And then later on in Jesus' life, he faced the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection. And he came forth, and it says in Romans 1, he was declared revealed to be the Son of God by the resurrection of the dead. Amen. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3.10 or 4.10, he says, I want to know him. And in the power of his resurrection. And even be conformed to the fellowship of his sufferings. Wow. What he's saying is look. I'm going to come forth in resurrection power. He came forth in resurrection power. And was revealed as the son of God. And news about it. Wow. There's somebody manifesting the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is here. The supernatural here. It's not just a theory, word only thing. But the blind receive their sight. The deaf hear. The dumb speak. The terminally ill are healed. There is supernatural grace and supernatural power on this people. Are you receiving this? I'm just speaking this in the atmosphere right now. I'm declaring. I spoke last week on, on, on faith from Hebrews 11. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The word substance is the word hypostasis. It means an essence. Like if you smell fresh bread, you get an essence of the fresh bread on the inside of you. You get a hypostasis on the inside of you of the fresh bread, even though it's not physically there. Well, I have a hypostasis right now. I have a hypostasis on the inside of me that God's sons and daughters are being revealed in this city and in this nation. Because Romans 8, 19 says, the creation is groaning for your manifestation. The creation is groaning for you to be revealed as sons and daughters of God. Because you've come through crisis. I don't have a hypostasis for defeat and failure. I don't have a, I haven't breathed that trash in. Turn the news off. Turn the fake news off and the fake media off. If there's people, if you've got friends on Facebook who post loads of drivel and loads of unbelief, you don't have to unfriend them. Just click don't follow. Yeah. I love you, but I'm not going to feed on your trash. I'm not going to feed. Look, it's the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the revelation of the devil. Yeah. So I'm not going to read articles on this or that and conspiracy theories about this or that. Look, the video I played before, that was not a conspiracy theory video. That was accurate yeah. prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Being fulfilled. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the Bible says don't spend your, your life on YouTube on conspiracy videos. Look up your redemptions drawn nigh. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. You're not going to be full of fear. 
That's not your hypostasis. Your hypostasis boldness. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Sons, I say sons and daughters of God. Now declare, you are going to walk under an open heaven in the power of the Spirit. Now say, the hypostasis on the inside of me says, you ain't getting sick. You are not getting sick. Listen to me on that. You are not getting sick. And you are not getting broke. And the hypostasis on the inside of me says, new businesses. New businesses. More contracts. New jobs. New promotions. Don't listen to the other hypostasis. Click on. Click on. Follow. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a time of crisis. But crisis means opportunity. Crisis means, yes, shaking and judgment, but it means revealing. And you're being revealed in this time because it's been painful. But many of us here have been through a season, never mind before the COVID started, you've been through a long season of God's dealings and refinement on your life. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 4 17 says this For the time has come for judgment to begin in the house of God. Listen. The word of God says, where does crisis begin? At the house of God. It says that's the word. The word judgment there is the word crisis. The time has come for the crisis to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? It's not going to be great. Why does crisis begin in the house of God? Because what man calls church and what God calls church is two different things. Yeah. God's version of church, who thinks God's version is probably the right version? <laughs> Do you think we need to add some extra marketing to it? Do we think we need it? Hold on, God. Your, your version of church is good, but let's just touch up the image a little bit. Let's just work on the PR here. Let's just advertise this a little better. No. <laughs> God's version of church is built on the foundation rock of the revelation of Christ. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. That means that that and he says, on you are Peter, you are a stone on this rock. What is the rock? The rock is the revelation he had. You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. You are the Christ. From you comes the anointing. From you comes the supernatural grace and power in our lives. From you comes the identity of sonship. You are the son of God. I am a son of God. You are fully divine, fully God. I am born of God. I have your DNA. You are God. Hallelujah. God's version of church is a company of supernatural anointed people. So the natural has to give way. God's version of church is to be the true house of God and open heaven on the earth. You know, what's this? We're in a time of crisis, so what's the solution? The solution is revival. Revival comes in time of crisis. Look through history. You look at the history of revival, it comes in a time of crisis. It comes in a time when the church at large ain't looking so great. And we love the church. It's, 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 we've got to pray for the church. But we can't be bound by a political correctness, man, please, either. We love what God loves. We hate what God hates. Revival comes in a time of crisis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord Almighty says in a little while. I will once, shake, I will once more shake heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory. What does the shake and lead to? It leads to the house being filled with glory. And it's one last time. This is one last time. Thank you, Jesus. One last time. You aren't born for the old time. Back then, you're all like sitting thinking, what am I doing? Yeah. I don't fit. Well, you fit now. Praise God. You fit. Hallelujah. This is your time. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is a time of glory coming upon your life, says the Spirit of God. There's a time of presence that will abide and will remain. And everything that you have endured, everything that you have been through, even your past failures, says the Spirit of God, everything will be reconciled. Just lift your hands to it right where you are. There is a time you, you, you see the Spirit of God is saying all the prophecies over your life, all of the prophecies. All of the prophecies over your life and all of the promises over your life. If there's anybody here today and you have unfulfilled prophecy over your life, just stand now. If you have unfulfilled promises over your life, stand. If you have clear prophetic words, prophecies from God that have not been fulfilled, it might look like they're never going to be fulfilled. It might look even more impossible. You have promises over your life not fulfilled. Well, I tell you, they are going to be fulfilled and they're not going to be fulfilled in a long time because we don't have long left. I'm speaking to people watching online. You have promises over your life. You have prophecies over your life. And if you're watching this today and you do not know Jesus as your Savior, that if there's anybody online or even anybody here today and you need to repent, if, if today was your last day, where would you go? Heaven or hell? If you don't know Jesus, my friend, you will end up in hell. But Jesus loves you. God is not willing that any should perish, but that you be saved. That you be filled with the Holy Spirit. That you be set free. And so right there where you are, you do not know Him. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. And I need you. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. I believe that God has raised you from the dead and I confess you as my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm born for such a time as this. There's people watching today. You are born for such a time as this. You are not going under. You are going over. I declare to everybody here today, you are going over. You are going over. You are an overcomer. You are born of God. You overcome. You overcome the world. Tomorrow is promised to none of us. Tomorrow is promised to none of us. So today is the day of salvation. Amen. Today is the day you, that you decide Jesus is Lord or not. Jesus is Lord or not. If Jesus is your Lord, lift your hands and say, Jesus, you are Lord of all. And if he is your Lord, then you will follow him wherever he goes, whatever that means. And that is the sort of disciple that he is bringing forth in these times. You are called to be an overcomer, one who overcomes to the end. He who endures to the end shall be saved, the word of God says. He who endures to the end shall be saved. And he is put in within your spirit right now as you lift your hands and say Jesus is Lord. He is putting within your spirit the power to overcome. He is making you an overcomer. The spirit of victory is coming upon your life today to finish your race and overcome to the end. To overcome any crisis because he is faithful. Who is faithful? God is faithful. Has he been faithful to you? Has he been good to you? And he never changes. He will never fail. He will never abandon you. He will never leave you. He never has. And he never will. He is with you. We declare he is with you. We declare his fire surrounds you. And he is the glory in the midst of his people. Oh, give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, the Lamb has overcome. He has overcome the world. And in his name, in his power, you shall overcome. Forget about yesterday. Forget
forget about the mistakes of yesterday. Forget about what you were. You are an overcomer. Oh, give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. This is a new day. This is a new day. Just take hold of this new day. Take hold of this new day. Step into the new of God. Praise God. Thank you. I just feel right now the Spirit of God wants to fall upon you in power. Wants to fall upon you. He's going to touch you where you are. He's going to touch you where you are. Just begin to cry out to Him. Lose it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just begin to cry out to Him. 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 God, I humble myself. God, I need you. Build me with your glory. Build me with your power. Yah, Rambo, Sende, Bob, Rambo, Tango, Rock, Come. Fire for. Fresh fire. Fire for. 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 God is working the supernatural in your life. You come here today, you better stay. I belong in the house of God. Hallelujah. The house of God is a place of healing. It's not a place to get sick. The house of God is a place to receive the anointing of God. The house of God is not the place of fear. It's a place of power. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. The house of God is where we bring forth our sacrifice of praise to this.